So on to math, just like in math and just like in writing, there is writing required in math, writing numbers. If we can't write letters, more than likely we cannot write numbers. So we need to come up with some strategies for them. What solutions can we come up with? How can we, re how can we remove this as a barrier? Um, and how can they show their knowledge in an alternative way? So lots of low tech solutions using magnetic numbers, using graph paper. Maybe it's somebody who can write, but they write really large or they have a difficulty aligning things. So you could use graph paper, um, but Desmos calculators for middle school and high school are really nice where um, they can just touch the, the screen in order to operate the uh, calculator and get a solution. ABCA.com also has math. Scholastic Study Jams also has um, a lot of math alternatives. And I will let Katie talk about Equatio, which is part of the Read and Write family. Equatio lets you type math into a Google Doc. It lets you type the symbols in the ways that a traditional keyboard doesn't. It also will read the symbols out loud correctly to you. Um, if you are interested in using that, please reach out to your specialized instructional facilitator for assistive technology, your CIFAT, or your IFT. We'll know about this as well. Equatio is not a calculator. It has a graphing function that is powered by Desmos, but it does not answer equations for you. You type it. It's a way to type your work, not it, it doesn't do the calculation for you. And it can be for very high level math. There's calculus, algebra, geometry, manipulatives that are part of this program. You can also use the math space in Equatio for lower level math and generate fraction blocks and clocks and other visuals that are traditionally used with elementary schoolers. Lots of manipulatives virtual manipulatives available in Equatio. If you want to know more about Equatio as well, there's training resources linked here and step-by-step -step instructions linked here on how to use it so you can see YouTube, getting started, the Equatio website, all that good stuff. Zern is access through LCPS Go for K for grades K through seven. You can print worksheets from it and also do virtual math activities for different missions, which is what they call learning objectives. You can create student accounts and assign them work virtually. As far as I can tell, you do not need parent permission to create student accounts for this. So let's think about the printable worksheets. If it's a student who cannot write numbers, then you could pull that into Orbit because they probably you can turn it into a PDF and then they can write directly on the screen or type directly on the screen. Or you could just do the activity virtually or do a combination of both based on what your students feel like doing that day. Give them the choice. GeoGebra is for more higher level math, um, graphing, geometry, there's a collaborative whiteboard, parental permission is required for student accounts to be created in GeoGebra, but even if parent permission is required for students to make accounts, you can always use this yourself for a learning demonstration tool to teach concepts. Mathigon is also um, an LCPS supported program. There is actually um, an Inspire Loudon group that you can join within Schoology that has a wealth of knowledge and wealth of information. You can pull in a lot of different types of manipulatives and then type directly on the screen. This looks like one that supports all different levels of math as well. Yes, lots of elementary activities in here. But it goes all the way up to algebra. Yes. And geometry. Very nice. Which means that if you start a student with this tool in elementary school, they can keep using it all through middle and high school, even just to practice on their own. How nice is that? 
because they're already familiar with the tool. And puzzles on there as well. And there's also some lesson plan links up there and different activities that people have already created. I want to pause for a minute and say we are not expecting you to learn every single one of these tools. We are presenting you with a very brief overview of many, many tools so that you can pick which ones are applicable to you, which ones are applicable to your learners, and explore those on your own with your IFT, with your CIFAT, and treat it like a menu, not as a to-do list, if that makes sense. BrainPop also has some math features, and within the settings feature of BrainPop, you can actually change the talking speed of the video for our students who may have slower processing. Um, under the quiz options in uh, BrainPop, you can turn on Immersive Reader, and it's also under the Related Reading tab as well. These are actually new features that BrainPop has just put in within the past several months. Again, Immersive Reader has a lot of overlap with text help programs like Read and Write, where it will read things out loud to you and highlight things as it reads. But if you have students that need those supports, you might need to familiarize them with both because the built-in accessibility features are going to work better than something else. So if you try and use read and write on BrainPop, it might not work as well as Immersive Reader because Immersive Reader is built into the website and it's designed to work with that. Minecraft can also be used for math. I did not build this. This is a screenshot I took of a giant number line, number square that I found that had already been made. So instead of having your students write down the answer to a question, you could have them run their Minecraft character to the number that is the answer to the question, which automatically can lead to a lot more engagement with it than just writing it down. And again, a lot of times the focus and the goal of the activity is not that they will write number 46, it's that they will recognize it or identify it. So think about what we're trying to get out of the activity and how can we maybe do it a different way so they can show their knowledge. So this is also Wixi and math. Again, this is more at the elementary school. It is on LCPS Go. You can type directly on the whiteboard. It also has some manipulatives like this ruler. So you could ask somebody to show me what three inches is, show me four plus two. They can put the dots on the screen. So again, these are activities they can do without ever having to write a number. 